so spring is right around the corner and I have a lot of exciting hikes planned for this year including a section of the North Country Trail. So in this video, I'm going to share with all of you all of the gear that I'm going to be bringing with me for the 2024 Allegheny 100. Hey everyone, Knowledge here with Reach Your Summit. Thanks for joining me. I've been getting a lot of questions lately asking how the Allegheny 100 went for me last year, if I am planning on attending again, and if so, what am I going to be bringing with me? So I've already answered that first question for the intro in this video. I am really excited and looking forward to participating again this year. I just signed up for the 100 miles and I'm looking forward to getting out there again and sharing the trail with all of you. So for those of you who are new to the channel or just coming across my videos, welcome. And for anyone who is unfamiliar with what the Allegheny 100 is, it's a 100 mile unsupported backpacking challenge that takes place in the second weekend of June every year. And the challenge has to be completed in 50 hours or less. So there is some night hiking involved. And this event takes place on the North Country Trail in the 100 mile section of Allegheny National Forest in Northwestern Pennsylvania. So the conditions that I'm expecting for this particular hike are high temperatures in the low 80s during the day and the mid 50s at night. There's a fair amount of elevation change throughout the entire hike and the terrain is covered with lots of roots and rocks. It can be very wet, it can be very muddy. There are some sections of hard packed terrain, some gravel, uh, single track, double track, old forest roads. Lots of varied conditions, so it keeps things interesting when you're out there. Last year, I had around a five pound base weight. This year, I've bumped up my base weight just a little bit by a few ounces, so I'm sitting at around five and a half pounds for this year. And one of my big focuses for this year is having a little bit more efficiency over what I had planned on bringing last year. So I'll put a link in the description for this video so you can check out what my gear list was that I had planned for using last year. Last year, things did not go as I had planned and I had to make the decision to bow out before the event even happened. I was super bummed about it. A week before the Allegheny 100 was to take place, I ended up unfortunately getting bit by a deer tick and so I was treated for Lyme. So I had a very heavy dose of doxycycline that I was on leading up to the event, but I wasn't going to let that and bring me down I was still planning on getting out there and I had my entire pack packed up the day before the event was to take place we had an unusual situation of wildfire smoke blowing down from Canada to the East Coast and it really decreased the air quality so much that when I was outside I could not even stand being outside for 10 minutes because I was so sensitive sensitive to the smoke due to my increased sensitivity from the doxycycline. I'm feeling really good about everything, really excited and looking forward to getting back out on the North Country Trail. Been doing a lot of preparations for this specific trip already. I've been getting out for night hikes. I've been getting out for high mileage days, getting out in all different types of conditions to get everything dialed in. We did have a little bit of a winter this year, so I was still getting out and enjoying those conditions during the season. Along with those trips, 
I was also taking advantage of times when I wasn't able to get out on the trail, utilizing that as additional strength and conditioning with yoga, gym exercises, working on some preventative maintenance with my vehicle, changing out a lot of parts and fluids and plugs to allow me to keep that investment going as well. So let's get into all of the gear that I'm going to be bringing with me in this 24 liter pack. So kicking things off, I have one of my favorite packs. Those of you that have seen me out on the trail, have followed my channel, have seen some of my videos, know that I'm a big fan of Palante packs. And one of my favorite packs by them is the Palante Joey. So I'm going to be using this 24 liter frameless hip beltless pack. This pack has a running vest style chest harness with four pockets. So I have quick, easy access to things while I'm on the move. Bottles are nice and easy to get at on the sides. I have a nice outer front pocket for additional items that I might want quick access to. And the patented bottom pocket for my snacks while I'm on the move throughout each day and the little trash opening on the other side of the pocket. This pack weighs a little bit more than my pack I had featured in the video last year. So the one I had last year was the V2. I still have that pack and many others. I'll put a link in the description for all of my Palante packs so you can check that out if you'd like. This one weighs 13 ounces total. It's made out of Ultra 200 fabric for the body. So I'll have that additional abrasion protection and water resistance if I do find that I'm out in heavy downpours during this hike. Very comfortable and it's going to help me remain efficient throughout the 100 miles. And then on one of the shoulder straps here, I have the Sunto Clipper Compass. This is a very lightweight functional compass that I can use to navigate with my map. The trail is really well blazed in a North Carolina Tar Heel Blue, well maintained, but should I need to have a way to navigate, at least I'll still have a compass that I can do that with. I'm going to take my sleeping pad. This is the Gossamer Gear 1 8 inch thin light pad. I can use this as a sit pad during the day if I need to. I can lay it out if I want to take a quick nap or rest during this hike. This is going to be my sleeping pad for camp each night. And I'm also going to use this as a little bit of cushion and structure for my Palante Joey. So I'm just going to fold this and slide it right along the back. So it's resting right at the back panel up along my back so I won't have things digging into my back while I'm hiking. Even though the Ultra fabric has very high water resistance, still going to line my pack with a Nyla Fume pack liner. I'm going to put everything that I want to remain dry inside of this. And I have a couple of items that I'm going to be putting inside of the pack liner. So at the bottom of my quilt, I have a pair of Injinji toe socks. These are an additional pair that I'm going to be bringing so I can rotate them throughout the day to help with blister prevention, keep me a little bit cleaner. And then I have my Sea to Summit Eros down pillow. This is adding a little bit of additional weight to what I had planned on using last year. And this is just very quick and simple and very quick to deflate, roll up, and throw into my quilt. And I'm all about that efficiency this year. This will also give me a little bit more of a better rest and recovery for the times when I'm resting during this challenge. So that's going down at the bottom of my quilt. And my quilt is going to be my trusty Enlightened Equipment Enigma 30 degree quilt. Sewn in foot box, good amount of insulation. I'm not really bringing too much else. So if I absolutely need it to warm up a little bit, at least I'll have that with this quilt. I have hundreds of nights of this quilt, still going strong. It's been fantastic. Can close it up if I want it to have similar feel to a sleeping bag. And this is going to go right inside of my Nyla Fume pack liner.
Then on top of that, I'm going to have my food storage. So this will be all the additional food throughout the challenge that I will have with me. I'm going a little bit heavier with this for this year too. So I'm going to be using an Ursac Major XL. This is still pretty lightweight, but again, I'm going for efficiency. I don't wanna have to waste time looking for a branch, throwing the rope over, getting everything set up with the PCT method. This, I can just store 200 feet away from wherever I'm set up, tie it off to a tree, and this will allow me to keep everything protected, protect the wildlife, and inside of here. I'm going to line it with a Plymore food grade bag liner and I'll have a, another video come up on this channel within the next month or two going over the food that I'm planning on bringing with me for the Allegheny 100 this year. I'm going with the larger bag just because I am planning on bringing a few larger items like a bag of potato chips and I want to be able to have the additional space for that when I'm storing it each day. So with that filled up, that's gonna go next on top of my quilt, closest to my back with the heavier weight. I am going stoveless for this event. I'm not going to be cooking up dinner at camp. I'm not going to be making hot coffee. So just planning on bringing that. And I'll have my Diddy bag. Now this bag is made out of Dyneema. In my Diddy bag, I'm going to have a desiccant packet and that's going to absorb any moisture that might get in here. So that way any electronics that I have won't get damaged in the humidity or if it does start really raining out. And I'm going to have a small Swiss Army classic multi-tool. So I'll have a knife blade on it, tweezers, some screwdrivers, a pair of scissors, all that I need. This is all I've ever needed for three season through hikes and backpacking trips. And it will help me with any types of gear repair that I might have, or if I have any minor medical situation. And then for self care, one of the items I'm going to be bringing with me is a Reach Your Summit Rology Cork Massage Ball. This will help me roll out any tension I have, uh, any stress points, help me take care of my feet, my back throughout the challenge. Though I am going stoveless for the event, I'm still going to be packing a mini Bic lighter. This lighter will allow me to start a fire in an emergency situation. Always good to have, though I'm going to do my best to not need it. Then in a Ziploc, I'm going to have some charging cables that are for any of the devices that I have, like my phone or my light or my Garmin. Going with a slightly bigger battery pack this year. So this is a Anchor 13,000 milliamp hour external battery pack, and it has two charging ports. So my phone that I'm going to be bringing and filming with for the challenge is the Apple iPhone 15 Pro. And that has a slightly larger battery capacity than the phone that I had last year. So I need a little bit of extra juice for that and the other items that I'm bringing with me. And then in my other Ziploc, I have a first aid kit. I have some bandages. I have some blister tape, some kinesiology tape. I have some anti-inflammatory, antihistamines. I do have some doxycycline in here in case I need it. Soap, toothbrush, toothpaste, gear repair, and a vapor barrier liner. And then that just all stores inside of here and we'll go right inside of the pack, furthest away from my back. Then on top of that, I have my shelter. This year I'm going with the Meadow Physics Abode. I'm choosing this shelter over my preferred tarp setups just for efficiency. This shelter is designed like a half pyramid with the mosquito mesh already sewn in. So I don't have to worry about additional bug protection like I would if I were using the tarp. This is a very simple, well thought out shelter, giving me protection from the bugs, protection from the elements. I've been really enjoying this a lot. This does not replace my tent. This does not replace my tarp systems that I generally prefer. I still really enjoy using tarps overall, but for the sake of efficiency and the Allegheny 100, this shelter is going to help me out quite a bit. If you'd like to see this shelter a little bit more up close, check out the video link 
below in the video description for this video. And you can see a first look at setting the shelter up, getting in and out of it, and all of the specs, if that's something you're interested in. Look forward to using it a little bit more in different conditions, getting dialed in with it a little bit more before the event and then using it out on Allegheny 100. And then that is going to go right at the very top in my pack. So I can have quick access to that if it gets really windy out, if it starts pouring out, I can have that easy to get at set up so then I can get inside of there and allow me to keep everything dry under that shelter. And that tent requires six stakes. So I'm going to be using my Z packs carbon fiber peg stakes. Good holding power, very easy to clean, very effective, nice and lightweight. And that's going right in the outer pocket here. Then unless I absolutely need this for additional warmth, wind protection, protection from the bugs, protection from any precipitation, I'll be packing the Arcteryx Norvan SL hooded jacket. This says Gore-Tex Shake Dry. Been my go-to for several years now. Still holding up really well. Wouldn't be really bummed when this jacket breaks down and I need to get something else. But until then, I have this. I'm going to continue using it. And I'll keep that right at the top of my pack on top of the shelter in case I need to get that at any time during my hike or when I'm setting up camp. I'll also be packing some wind pants. So I'll be packing the Montbell Tachyon wind pants. I can use these for bug protection, for wind protection. Very, very light precip. They are not a full rain pant, but it'll give me additional warmth if I need it and bug protection. I'll roll this up. So with packing this pack, I'm packing by priority. So my shelter and jacket are at the top in case I need to get at them. Then all of my other smaller items that I might not need as frequently are still relatively quick and easy to get at inside of the pack. My heavier food is up along my back and my quilt I don't need unless I'm resting. So that's going at the very bottom. And then on the outside pockets, I will have everything else. So I have my lighting and that is going to be a Rovivon Aurora A5X flashlight. This is USB rechargeable, very bright. I really love using flashlights during three season trips so I can cast and elongate shadows off of the rocks and trees while I'm using this. I can clip this to the brim of my hat if I wanted to use it as a headlamp. I can tuck it behind my ear, which I normally do. This also has a red light, so if I need to look at my maps at night, I'll still have the red light for that. And battery life lasts a pretty long time, so I've been really happy with this flashlight. One of my favorite pieces of gear, and I'll be storing that right inside of one of the chest strap pockets. Then I will have my mosquito head net. I'm not going to be keeping it inside of this. This is just, so I've had this in storage for a little while. Hadn't needed it in the winter time, obviously. This mosquito head net will give me sanity during the day, allow me to focus on my goals. And when I'm not using it, just store it right inside of this pocket here, right next to the flashlight. And for eye protection, I'm going to be wearing some Ombra's sunglasses. These don't have any arms on them. Very durable. It'll give me a good amount of clarity. And these are really neat. I've been really happy with them so far. They hang around my neck when I'm not using them. When I am, I just put them over my ears and they're nice and stable. I don't have to worry about them falling off good amount of clarity and protection from the sun's rays. Don't have to worry about any pressure around my ears from the arms. They work great with my hat. And most importantly, don't have to worry about them breaking. The case, I'm going to be bringing that just to protect the lenses a little bit, to protect the glasses. There's also a really nice microfiber cleaning cloth that is sewn into the case itself. So I'll have that with me if I need to clean the lenses at all. 
And then I'm going to store that right inside of another pocket on the shoulder strap. Then on the other side, I have my Garmin InReach Mini. Self-service isn't as reliable in some areas out there as it might be in others. So having a satellite communicator will allow me to reach out if I have any emergency. I can also allow my significant other to keep in contact with me and I can message her back and forth, check in and let her know how I'm doing, even if I don't have cell service. This will also allow me to check the weather if I don't have access to that. And that is going to go right inside of the other bottom pocket. And then the top pocket I have some lip balm and I have some sunblock, body glide anti-chafe healing balm to help address any hot spots and prevent blisters from happening to begin with. And then some hand sanitizer for interim cleaning. And then for bug protection, this is all-terrain herbal armor, natural insect repellent lotion. And this is in a spray bottle I got from Lightsmith, so I can just spritz it on any areas where I might have exposed skin. So I'm going to have that inside of that pocket as well. Then in the rest of the outer pocket here, I'm going to have my map of the entire section of Allegheny National Forest with the 100 miles all mapped out. And then I have my Hygiena Backcountry Bidet and my Deuce of Spades Cat Hole Trowel. And then I'm bringing my Aftershocks or Shocks Aeropex headphones. These are bone conduction headphones. So the headphone itself stays outside of my ear, so it'll allow me to hear everything. It's USB rechargeable. I'll use this during times when I have a lot of time to think to myself, which is going to be quite a bit with hiking 100 miles in 50 hours. The few years that I've been out for this event, I've hiked with quite a few people at the beginning. And then as you get further along with the mileage, you actually end up not seeing anybody. You'll be able to listen to some podcasts or audiobooks and feel like I'm having a conversation with somebody. So this will be a good morale booster. Then one side pocket I have my trekking pole. This is going to be for setting up the Meadow Physics abode shelter each night. I'm going to be doing 40 plus miles each day. So this will help with that duration and that distance each day. Give me a little bit of support, a little bit of stability if I need it. I'm not going to be hiking with it all of the time, but it will be super helpful for those times when it is much needed. This will also help with a few water crossings that I'll have during this event. And I have one water bottle. This is the Platypus one liter soft bottle. Works with my water treatment that I'm going to show you in just a second, but it also works with my bidet. When I'm not using the bottles, I can just roll it up, store it right inside of the pocket like that. And the other side, I will have my other water bottle, one liter also. The Sawyer Squeeze. This has been a very reliable water filter for me over the years. It's been my go-to. So I'll have that right in my pocket there. A small scoop cup. So I just cut one of the Sawyer soft bottles down to size. This I'm going to use to make coffee each morning. This will be my little coffee cup and I can drink from that. And then if water is very low and not as reliable in some areas and I really need it, I can fill up this and then pour it into my dirty water bottle and filter it. And then I have my footprint. So because my tent does not have any door, does not have a vestibule, does not have a floor, crawling in and out from the tent. So I need to have some type of ground protection. And if it's not really buggy, I can just sleep out in the open and still have a nice bit of protection from the ground, have a nice clean surface to sort out everything and get it organized for the following day. So my ground sheet or the floor of my tent 
is just a simple piece of polycrow, similar to what you would get at the hardware store, what you use to seal up windows, nice and light, and holds up surprisingly well. That's all of the gear for my clothing. I'm going to be wearing a Ciela Go Cap for my hat. Really love these hats. They dry very quickly. They're very comfortable. It'll give me a good amount of sun protection, absorb sweat while I'm hiking if it's very hot out, and it will also be compatible with my mosquito net to give me that sanity from the bugs while I'm hiking if I need it. Also, when I'm hiking at night, if I need to use my flashlight, I can always clip that flashlight to the brim of that hat. Then I'll have on the Ombra's sunglasses that I just showed you. My upper body, going to be wearing a generic button-down dress shirt that I bought from Target, made out of synthetic materials. So it's going to end up drying a lot faster, nice and light and airy, it breathes well, I get a good range of movement. Over that, I'm going to be wearing the Alpha 60 Pullover Crew Neck by Senshi Designs. Alpha 60 is formerly known as the Wren, and I have a few videos on my channel going over that fleece. I really love this pullover. Don't have to worry about having an additional hood getting in the way. I have the hood from my rain jacket if I need that. You also get an event t-shirt during this challenge, so I can always tie that around my head and make it into a beanie if I need a little extra warmth. But this pullover is very simple, gives me a good amount of insulation when I'm active, and also dries and breathes really well. I've been a big fan of Alpha Direct over the last few years. Material has been a game changer for me, so I'm really looking forward to wearing that out on this trip. In my lower half, I'm going to be wearing a pair of Palante shorts. I own a few pairs of these shorts in different colors and different fabrics. So what's unique about this pair of shorts that I'm going to be wearing is that it's made out of the same ultra grid mesh that the pockets are made out of with this Palante Joey pack. So I get a good amount of stretch to it, high amount of water resistance, good abrasion resistance, and really comfortable. What I love about these shorts too is that the pockets are very deep. There's four of them total, so I can throw snacks in those pockets or anything else that I might want quick access to while I'm hiking throughout the day each day on this challenge. Been very happy with the Palante shorts. And then I'll be wearing boxer briefs underneath that because the shorts do not have a built-in liner. My socks. I'm going to be wearing a pair of Injinji toe socks. Been wearing Injinjis exclusively for the last three years now and been very happy with them. They just work really well for me. Those socks are going to pair with my footwear, which are going to be the Ultra Lone Peak 8s. Very similar to the Lone Peak 6, which was one of my favorite versions of the Lone Peak shoe over the years. Still slightly prefer the Lone Peak 6 overall, but I've been very happy with the traction, the breathability, the dry time, the comfort and fit of the Lone Peak 8. And then lastly, I'll be wearing the Apple Watch Ultra. Been really happy with this watch over the last year. Battery life is great. I'll have mapping on here. Can also keep track of stats and my body metrics while I'm on the move. And It'll be fun to just look back on the stats at the end of the event and have that to reflect on in the future. So there you have it. That is everything that I'm going to be using on this year's Allegheny 100. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions on any of this gear or you are signed up for the Allegheny 100 this year and you have specific questions in regards to the event, please feel free to leave them in a comment below or you can contact me at any time at reachyoursummit.net. Happy to help you out and answer any questions that you might have. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. I have a lot of exciting content throughout this year to share with all of you. 
really looking forward to putting those together and sharing them with you. Lastly, if you are signed up for the Allegheny 100 this year, I look forward to seeing you out there. I look forward to sharing the trails with all of you and seeing you out there. If you see me at the beginning of the event, please feel free to come by and say hello. I wanna wish you all the best of luck out there this year for the event. And till the next video, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate all of you. Catch you in the next one.